Beyonce's Ivy Park has been in the news a lot lately for not meeting its sales projections by a long margin. And though I'm a bit late to the buzz, it did get me wondering why they're failing so hard and so publicly. The company began back on the 27th of July 2014 as a limited company named Hack Rem Co, run completely by Topshop or Arcadia heads Paul Budge, Mary Homer and Adam Goldman. There is no mention of Beyonce or her management company Parkwood in this document. However, mere days later, shares were split and Lee Callahan and James Sabe, both of whom work for Parkwood, would come on board as directors. So this was clearly a pre-planned co-enterprise between Parkwood, the Beyonce-owned entertainment company, and Topshop, a British retailing giant that was very well known for being extremely fashion-forward and even used to show at Fashion Week. This would be its own full company, recently renamed to Parkwood Topshop Athletic Limited, and would be complete with its own staff, including a creative director and set of designers. The venture was slated to be a sportswear label based off of the fact that Beyonce was a known dancer, and it was set to include clothing, accessories, and footwear geared towards fashion-led fitness, which would capitalize on the growing athleisure trends of the day. It was planned for the winter of 2015, but after some internal shifts, including Tina Knowles, Beyonce's mother, coming on board as a director, it actually launched in the spring of 2016 with this collection that was so successful in the UK that it crashed the Topshop website and had people queuing around the block. But Unfortunately, it didn't hit quite as hard in the States, where Cosmopolitan reported that there was no queue at all outside stores, and USA Today asked if this was the end of celebrity-endorsed brands entirely. The collection itself was not bad. It did look an awful lot like products that were already on the market from established sports brands, but they had a nice balance of pretty simple athletic wear that was fashion-led as they expressed. However, a major criticism I remember at the time, which has been rehashed many times as a criticism recently, is that it's simply a confusing brand for Beyonce to start in the first place. She's not known for either fashion or sports, really, Yes, she is a dancer, and yes, she wears beautiful things, but we only see the polished side of that, like a fantasy that she's just naturally that good at everything, so it doesn't really go with her personal brand. But moreover, it also didn't go with the Topshop brand either. Topshop was known for being very fashion-forward, something your parents might dislike that you wore, but it wasn't ever a brand associated with sportswear. I know Ivy Park was supposed to be a fashion sportswear brand, but because of how it marketed itself as literal, usable sporting garments, consumers were being sold on this idea of a new sports-focused brand, but from two brands that had no history in sports whatsoever. So right from the jump, it was a strange co-enterprise that had, one, a confusing place of sale, and two, pretty average product without a differentiator. So it's safe to say that the company was banking on initial buzz and sales based solely on Beyonce's personal celebrity status. This of course is fine, many celebrities rely on that, it's just not as sustainable of a plan as a full company like this would need to have, especially considering all of their initial investments. In fact, this wouldn't even sustain them through their initial year of sales. You see, even though they had almost 12 million in turnover, it was nowhere near enough to cover their costs, and in 2016 alone, the brand ended up making a net loss of 5.4 million pounds, which is around 7 million US dollars. So the company was not doing well financially, and yet, instead of reassessing their offering, in 2017, they came out with multiple releases, including a resort, spring summer, and autumn winter collection that all were as indistinct as the debut. Product wise, of all of the garments in these collections, none of them were groundbreaking. Instead, they were just average sports garments without necessarily having anything special about them. There's no exceptional design features or technical advances in fabrics, nor was it cheaper than the current market offerings. Effectively, there was nothing to differentiate them from Nike or Adidas, whom these ads seemed to make it look like they were competing with. Realistically, 
Considering we know that the first year fiscally was a flop, I'm not sure why they didn't change up the product to give it something at least a little different to everything else that's on the market, considering how important product-based competitive advantages are in the sportswear space. Or alternatively, they could have just changed up the advertising to give the brand a new perspective on which they could sell the clothes like a platform. Instead, the tone remained very serious with a heavy focus on the sportswear element overlaid with inspirational words from the models that honestly just felt like a copy of an Adidas or Nike advert like this Adidas one from two years before in 2015. So there wasn't anything new about the marketing nor the product to actually make it desirable past the Beyonce endorsement, which considering these weren't limited releases doesn't actually add much long term weight. Of course, this was reflected quite obviously in their profit and loss charts, where though they had 17 million in turnover, 6 million up from the previous year, it still wasn't enough to make the company profitable. They had 2.8 million pounds in losses for 2017, which when added to their 2016 losses and the 2015 setup costs, led to them being 9.5 million in the red. The writing was on the wall for the company, and so after the Spring 18 collection was also a commercial flop, motions began in the September-October of 2018 to move the company back to Arcadia. Stephen Ramon Jr., who works for Parkwood, was out, Beyonce's mother Tina also terminated her contract, and the name of the company was changed to Acleves. Following this, Parkwood transferred half their shares to Topshop, giving them 75% control over the company in November, with Beyonce specifically signing her significant control of the company back to the Arcadia Group in a deal which saw her reacquire the rights to the brand name Ivy Park. So just to be clear, now the brand name Ivy Park and the business itself, now called Acleves or Acleves, are separate entities. The company, Acleves, as of the 7th of September 2019, was completely voluntarily liquidated by Arcadia, and the company was effectively shut down, though they have still been filing liquidator statements of receipts until October last year, so it's a very slow process. I also want to point out that this was two months before Philip Green, who's the head of Arcadia, had his sexual misconduct allegations come to a head, so it actually had nothing to do with that, as many sources are trying to say. But it does confirm that the company was fully shut down, and the name Ivy Park was brought back by Beyonce slash Parkwood, which is of course very important to the story, because that means that Beyonce would be able to use the name Ivy Park again in the future. And sooner than you would think, because something I skipped out on mentioning is that well before the company was finally voluntarily liquidated in September, she was already looking for another partner. She had meetings at Reebok, Nike and Under Armour before in April of the same year, Beyonce announced a partnership with Adidas to continue the Ivy Park line in what looks like it was a licensing agreement with Parkwood, officially debuting in January 2020. This was undoubtedly a smart move as a huge issue with the Topshop line was that the product had no differentiator. Adidas, meanwhile, spent hundreds of millions on textile and product innovations like the at-the-time-new and not-yet-failed Speed Factory, or the millions it had put into making environmentally friendlier textiles through a partnership with Stella McCartney. So even though it's still not very on-brand to have Beyonce do a sports label, it is on-brand for Adidas, obviously, and that heavily showed through the product. The collection was significantly more Three Stripes heavy than it was Ivy Park name heavy, and undoubtedly that was a good thing for the Adidas target market, who were a more reliable sell than Beyonce's fans had proved to be over at Topshop. But there still wasn't anything massively unique about the collection as a whole. To quote Sondheim, it's not good, it's not bad, it's just nice. So it became a contended topic. Many people loved the collection, and many people didn't see much merit in it. But instead of picking at the actual collection, what came under fire was their marketing. For one prong of the marketing plan, they had gifted the collection in its entirety to a significant amount of celebrities, from Kim Kardashian to Rita Ora, Zendaya, and even Reese Witherspoon. Celebrity marketing is something I definitely don't need to explain to you, it's been going on for over 250 years at this point, so you know what it is. But with this debut, 
Many Beyonce fans were perturbed because they'd been loyal fans for a really long time. They felt entitled to getting the collection gifted to themselves instead of the celebrities who seemingly had no ties to Beyonce. Honestly, a part of me thinks that sending racks of clothes to fans could be brilliant marketing. As long as they shared it on social media, I mean, it has great potential to go viral and so could be very attention-grabbing for their brand revival. But on the other hand, where would that stop? How would she choose one fan over another or one fan group over another? It's a recipe for criticism that she clearly did not need when trying to actually get this business to work. And it's safe to say it did well. The first collection sold out in minutes, the second collection also sold out in minutes in the October of 2020. And though the pandemic obviously made sales slump globally, it was an area that according to the Adidas financial report, they were looking to invest in. So clearly, they saw growth to be had here. This was especially obvious after their clearly very expensive February 2021 ad debuted, showing that they were going significantly more down the fashion route than the sporty route that the Ivy Park name had previously been pushing. Again, a very smart move from Adidas. As mentioned before, Beyonce is not known to be overtly sporty. Sure, she's not really known for being a fashion girl either, but sporty is even less on brand in my opinion, and so going down the fashion route is just a smarter bet. Plus, it definitely has more merit than just straight up doing a merch line, which has the easy possibility to look tacky. And they'd already seen success with the Stella McCartney line, so it had expansion potential for Adidas. The collection was obvious in its vision for the brand too very clearly showing it was no longer about practical sportswear so much as fashionable sportswear. A bit late to the game, sure, but at least it had a clear vision of what it was trying to sell. But that doesn't mean it was well received. Some of the pieces in the collection, like this latex bodysuit worn by Beyonce and the latex dress worn by Hailey Bieber in the promo, were confusing to fans. And she was also called out for not having Saweetie in the promo video because she so famously brands herself as the icy girl. So overarchingly, the collection to consumers just came off as confusing. The second full collection, Rodeo, released in August and was easily as confusing. But because the collection was based off of a Rodeo, Texas, Cowboy, that kind of vibes, it seemed to suggest that they had had a meeting internally to discuss how to bring the Beyonce brand into the mix, just that they hadn't done it well. The Icy collection, because she's known for being expensive, perhaps, and then this Rodeo collection, because she's from Texas? I understand that that's what they've done, I can see how it makes sense on paper, but honestly, neither of these things are so extremely obviously Beyonce that they could capitalise on it the way that they seem to have thought they could. I mean, I know she's from Texas, but it's not something that is synonymous with Beyonce. If you really think about it though, what is Beyonce's brand, her personal brand? Because that's what they're trying to package with this, and yet nothing tangible actually comes to mind. We know things about her, but because she has kept her private life a mystery, it's extremely hard to capitalise on her personality. She's the performer, Beyonce, and mystery is just part of her appeal. Personally, if I was to have advised on this, I would have gone in the beehive, bayhive direction, based it around the fact that she's the queen bee, just because there's a lot to explore there. They could have had honey-coloured clothes, even a honey motif or bag. It's easy to transfer to children's wear and replicable for future collections as long as you keep within that black, yellow, orange, gold colour palette. This is marketable and obviously Beyonce geared enough to get that fanfare that they really needed initially. Whereas icy mountains and a dirty cowboy ranch are a bit of a harder sell to people outside of her extremely devoted fans that actually do know her for those things. And it seems that I am right in my assumption that it was a hard sell. I couldn't find any information on how well these collections sold individually, nor could I find sales information about the Peloton crossover they did in the same year, the Halls of Ivy collection that actually featured both of her daughters in the advert, or the swimwear collection called Flex Park, which all released as well in 2021, leading to a total of only 93 million US dollars across the entire portfolio. And it was only barely mentioned in the financial report as an area in which they could see future growth. By then, in 2022, the collections just became more obscure. 
They had Park Trail, Ivy Heart and Ivy Topia collections, as well as a new shoe, the Super Sleek, which again, all missed the mark on the Beyonce branding and weren't distinct enough to have product-based desirability either. We know now that sales were bad, they were projected for 250 million US dollars, but looking at the history, it's obvious they were never going to make that, they've never made anywhere near that. Eventually, they only took in 40 million in 2022, netting a loss of 10 million US dollars, which is much more on brand for Ivy Park. As of right now, it's expected that the partnership will close after 2023, so in 2024. And just to cut in an update, Adidas and Beyonce have mutually decided to part ways literally while I was editing this video, which was really the obvious choice. They simply don't have the money to lose after the whole Yeezy Kanye West scandal that lost them a billion dollars, more on that in this video, but Beyonce will still earn her licensing fee of 20 million US dollars this year as they have agreed in their initial licensing contract, but after that she does still have options. She still owns the brand name, or at least it's still owned by Parkwood, so there's definitely a chance it will come back, but with a new partner, perhaps one of the brands she had a meeting with before. But now, after failing twice with two separate countries on two separate continents, perhaps they should just leave the market or do something else with a different brand and maybe try to recreate the success that Jay-Z saw with Rockaware back in the 90s with another business. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please like it. And for more videos, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you're interested in videos just like this one, but about beauty brands, you're very welcome to check out my beauty channel, Underskin, using this link here. Or if you'd like early access to future videos, my Patreon is linked below.